Now, the Lord has given me a message. I was kind of hoping not to leave it tonight. To be quite honest with everybody, I, I didn't want to do it. <clears throat> I really didn't. I promise you that. Uh, with me, the way it goes a lot of the time, how many of you know we got trials and we got struggles in life? I don't like to stand up and preach a message that I've been failing on. But how many of you know that sometimes in God's grace, he gives you something and you got to leave it anyways. Think of uh, Isaiah that Jeremy brought out just a little while back in chapter 6. He stood before the Lord and the Lord had a call for him. And he said, but I'm a man of unclean lips. He confessed it of himself. And, and what I'm about to bring forth and preach on tonight, I definitely can't stand before you holier than thou on. I tell you that every time, but I can tell you of a certainty today that the Lord has placed this upon my heart. And to be quite honest, I, I was waiting to, to maybe put this one on Facebook and uh, just I've been trying to get the victory over it myself over the past little bit because of just the way that the devil is coming down hot and heavy right now just seems to be through manifold many many frustrations and so uh, the word that we've got today I preached to you last time out of Luke chapter 21 and there is just one verse that I will speak to you that Jesus said in verse 19 of Luke 21 and then we will switch to books and chapters here in a minute. It says, in your patience possess ye your souls. And he's telling them of many horrible things that are to come that are going to be trying times that are going to put you to your wits end. Has anybody ever felt like they've been at their wits end? I can tell you of a truth. My goodness, I've been at my wits end it seems like over the past little bit. And uh, the, the Lord just keeps feeding me these words and feeding me these words. And it's amazing how he began to give this to me before all of this set in. And, you know, we can have the knowledge of it. We can see things. We can hear and we can read of what God is able to do for us. But sometimes we end up just like the disciples, don't we? Here they've watched Jesus perform many miracles. Just fed the 5,000, they get on a ship, and then their, their faith is failing them. It's amazing, isn't it, how fickle human faith is. It's amazing to me that we can kind of fall into the same category, but these words are given to an admonition to us so that we don't have to fall into these things. I want you to understand that. So what I bring forth, maybe it's there in your life right now. I know it certainly is mine. But you don't have to fall victim to these things. You don't have to be the continual prey of the devil and falling continually into temptation. Absolutely not. But the word of the Lord clearly tells us, in your patience possess ye your souls. And then if you turn with me over to Hebrews, and we'll spend some time here. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. He says, cast not away therefore your confidence which hath great recompense of reward. There is always a reason to press on through the battles in which we face. Because we understand that as we keep ourselves faithful to God, there will be a reward at the end of this thing no matter how hot the trial you face. No matter how great the temptation is for you to stray away from God. There is always a reward at the end and I've preached it before and I believe that the prize is worth the press that we put into it. Amen. I believe that. So he goes on to say in verse 36, For ye have need of patience. Anybody know what we're going to preach on tonight? <laughs> Amen. Patience. For ye have need of patience. Get this. This is the part that nobody ever likes. Even me. That after. Somebody say after. Now you take that in. Oh my. Yeah. Oh goodness. After. 
that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back, but back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Now God gave me a couple little points to take from this portion of Scripture. And when we look at this, it always makes me think of Joseph. And in Joseph's life, a man that I believe showed uh, the utmost amount of patience with the things that befell him. I've preached before that many of the things that we go through, we bring, quite frankly, up on ourselves. And we've got nobody to thank but ourselves for the shape that we're in and for the situations that we face, whether they be emotional, mental, uh, let's go ahead and say financial in there because that becomes a burden to many people. And it's because we've been unfaithful stewards with what God has given us. But all so more the often it seems like we see a lot of people that end up in just horrible situations that they never had control over. Guess what? Joseph didn't have control over the things that happened to him. God gave him a vision. God gave him a dream. And you know what happened? There were people that got jealous of that. His own brothers. It's a, your own family much of the time. I'm telling you right here in the house of God, people will get jealous. People will get envious. People will have something against you. People will talk about you. Jesus was prophesied of in the Old Testament. And the prophet said, where'd you receive these wounds? And he said, in the house of my friends, those that should have received me, those that should have rejoiced at my coming, those that should have rejoiced at my word were the very ones that put these nails in my hands that put this nail in my feet, that drove those crown of thorns into my skull. It was the ones that I cared for deeply and those that should have been closest to me. Sometimes you don't have control over the things that come in your life. But I encourage you to demonstrate patience of the Holy Ghost through it all. And before we read that the Holy Ghost was even given after the book of Acts, we see Joseph. And I believe Joseph was a very faithful and patient man with the things that fell upon him. Therefore, his dream, there was envy. For the love of his father, there was envy in the hearts of his brother. And so all of his brothers conspired against him. There were some that had more malicious intents than others. But they said, let's throw him in the pit. Some said, let's kill him. Oh, they found an opportunity, didn't they, to get rid of Joseph once and for all. And they sold him into slavery. And there was a couple peas that, that pan out in Joseph's life, if you will. For one, you see what happens to him. The first is going to be patience. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. And then you see where he gets put. He gets put in the pit. There's another one. And then from there, he gets sold into slavery and ends up in Potiphar's house. But it's amazing to me how if we as the children of God will show a form of faithfulness unto Him despite the way that the winds of this world are beating us, that the trials of life seem to come so contrary against us. If we continue faithful with God, it's amazing if you've just got eyes to see it, how God is still blessing you and providing and paving a way in the midst of all of the things that you struggle with. And this is what much of the church lacks today is the vision. It's what I've lacked much of the time here in the past little bit with the things that I've faced. It's the vision of, of how God is still continually gracious. It's the acknowledgement of how despite the things that are wrong, God's still working several things in my favor. 
And I love the knowledge that he's given, but it's up to me and you to take it and apply it in our lives. That even in those times that are hard, he says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, that our light affliction, which is only for a little while, worketh for us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory, showing that your affliction, your problem, the very thing that vexes your soul, if your being faithful to God is working for you. It's working for you. It's working something in you. It's leading you. It's building you up to something. And how many of you know that patience doesn't always happen overnight? It doesn't. It doesn't. I, I, sad to say, I've probably been more patient in times past than what I have been here of late. But thank God for his word that's quick to set us straight. Amen. Man, I didn't even mean to rhyme there, but I did. My goodness. But look here. When you continue to read this, you'll see that even though he's finding favor, recognize where you're finding favor in the eyes of God. Recognize where the blessings are are so heavy upon your life of God. Instead of dwelling so much on the negative, Pastor James Hinton once said, count your blessings and not your blisters. And I find good wisdom and instruction in that. I find good counsel in it. And that's what we need to be doing. And I believe that's what Joseph was doing with all of the misfortunes that had fallen up on him. And so we read that Time after time, it seems just like misfortune and tragedy follows Joseph, doesn't it? Anybody's uh, heartstrings pulling on them yet? Woe is me. It's just trial after trial that follows me. It's just negative here, it's bad there. Nothing works for me. My goodness, if you're not one of them, you know them. <laughs> you know them. You cannot be like that. You can get caught up in that same spirit yourself if you're, if you're not careful. I've been there. I've been there. Why me? But it's funny how God will always set you straight. Elijah tried that, didn't he? And God set him straight, didn't he? He said, you ain't the only one. <laughs> Quit your crying, get back and go to work. Get you a nap, get you something to eat and go to work. Get back where I sent you. I want you to understand, though, with all that followed Joseph, landed him in the next P, the prison. But there we see Joseph still working and laboring for God. And there he deciphers a couple dreams. And guess what happens for all of his labor and for all the all that was stricken in the hearts of these people that were standing in the presence of Pharaoh. Guess what? They got, he, they got out and they forgot about him. Ever been forgotten? People forgot about you? Oh yeah. I've been forgotten. I, let me tell you, if you're going to operate in the ministry sometimes, there's going to be times where you just feel completely left out and forgotten. If you're going to be a Christian, a child of God, walking faithfully to Him, there's going to be times where you seem overlooked where you seem belittled, where you seem mocked and forsaken sometimes. But understand what Philip quotes so much. He'll never leave nor forsake thee. Never will. And there came a day, though, when Pharaoh himself had a dream. And then they said, I do remember my wrongs. There was a man that interpreted this dream of mine in the prison. And he can interpret yours. And we see that even throughout all that Joseph had faced in his life, he remained faithful to God no matter where he was at, no matter how wronged he had been by others. He still committed himself to others. In Bible study this morning, we talked about the Good Samaritan and pastor brought up something that I hadn't really thought about before. How the man came down from Jericho that fell among thieves and he was likely a Jewish man. The Jewish people had no dealings with the Samaritan. But guess what? When he fell <coughs> among thieves, what happened? They beat him, stripped him, left him half dead along the wayside. There came a priest, there came a Levite, and they passed by. They saw him, they knew he had need, but they passed by, being Jews themselves. But then a Samaritan 
the very one in which the Jews had no dealings with. He came by and had compassion on him despite the fact of what he may said of him at one point in time. The Jews had no dealings with the Samaritans. He could have spoke evil of one. He could have not wanted anything to do with him. He could have shunned him away if he would have been half alive, but he was half dead. But it was the Samaritan that cared for him. Instead of saying, no, nah, serves you right. For all the ways in which you do us, for the things in which you say about us unjustly. No. He had enough of the spirit within him to say, I'm going to help this man despite of what he may have done. Joseph never lost his bowels of compassion for those that had even done him wrong. And still, he served God faithfully. And I find that to be true today in the hearts of believers out there, that we must operate in forgiveness. For think of God Almighty who forgave sinners so great as us. As he hung upon that cross, he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. You think of a loving Savior who sees every single one of your quirks, every single one of your failures, every single one of your sins and your transgressions, but still has enough grace to give you His breath of life, to be able to call out unto Him and ask forgiveness. You think of that great grace that He even gives to the world of sin out here that blasphemes His holy name, that uses the breath of life that He gave them to curse and to speak evil of, and to mock, and to slander, and to gossip. And how many of the children of God have got involved in some of those things? And yet He gives grace to us. Thank God today for that grace. It ought to be dwelling within the heart of the believer. Ought to be today. But we see how things happened in Joseph's life, don't we? And when I say this, I want you to examine your own life right up side by side. Maybe you're the one that's beat yourself up, that's talked negatively about everything that you've ever faced in life. Have patience. You have need of patience. That after you have done the will of God. See, we can't fathom it sometimes, but it seems to me as if throughout all the portions of Joseph's life, it was the will of God to get him where he needed to be. That after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. And there's that other P. Takes him from the prison to the palace, but furthermore to the promise, the fulfillment of the dream that God had given him decades ago. Amazing how God can take even the thing that you see as your worst day and use what happens within it to turn it for a testimony. Thank God today that he behaved himself wisely, that he had the patience and the faith to trust God in that, that we're given this great admonition to show us that no matter what you're facing now, it's not the end of the matter. It's not the way that it's going to finish. What you currently face right now and what you see before you, you cannot allow it to affect your faith on what is to come. Because he says there's a promise to receive. I still believe the word of God. I don't know about you, but I believe that he works all things to the good of those that love him and are the called according to his purpose. I believe that with all of my heart today. People will say so often though, we talk about patience. We have need of it, don't we? One with another, from husband to wife to children, crying children. Right here within the church, everywhere you can imagine in this world of wickedness in which we live, the saint must practice patience with them. It's right there in the fruits of the Spirit. Is it not? Love, joy, gentleness, meekness, goodness, faith, temperance, hello, there's self-control. You're going to need that 
Then he mentions long suffering. We need that long suffering in us. We don't want anything to do with it because it's long suffering. You have to deal with things for a long period of time at points of time in your life. But I've heard it said so much. People will say, and <laughs> I love this because you start teaching on patience and you know the first thing that people will whisper to you, don't, don't pray for patience, don't pray for patience. The Bible never tells you not to pray for patience. No, it doesn't tell you not to pray for patience. You can pray for patience all you want. And honestly, it's a good thing. You need it. Jesus said you have need of it. Amen. Understand what you're asking for. What's the word say? Tribulation works patience. Go to the book of Romans. Tribulation works patience. Patience, experience, experience, hope. And hope not to be ashamed of, for it's given to us by the Holy Ghost that's shed abroad in our hearts. We have need of this patience. And I tell you today that if you lack patience within your life, and if it's something that you're struggling with, maybe just one-on-one -on -one or just in whole, entire, in general, you don't even have to pray for it because Jesus said, in this world you will have tribulation. But he said to be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Why don't you have to pray for it? Because this world's going to bring it your way regardless. Tribulation works patience, doesn't it? Is what it says. Well, then that would mean the oldest among us, whoever that is tonight, should be the most patient, but I've met some pretty old people that are very impatient. How about you? That goes to show something to me also in the scriptures, because most of the time tribulation happens to, to all men, all women, as long as you're alive upon the face of this earth. So the oldest among us should be the most patient if you just look at it Skin deep. That's not the truth, though, however. It's how you address the tribulation and the trials when they come into your life. Because if you are a continual mumbler, continual complainer, and grumbler, and murmurer, and doubtful, and faithless, when they come into your life always speaking negativity, your patience will not increase, and you'll face the same thing over and over and over and over again, and you'll feel cursed among all men. Let me tell you exactly how it works. When you begin to answer the frustrations and the tribulations of your life in grace, in faithfulness, in obeying the Word of God, and in patience, practicing it because you can control it by the Spirit of God that's given you. You looking at the trial, you looking at the situation, you looking at the mountain, you looking at the giant and saying, I don't care how big the odds are stacked against me. I know that one day my feet shall trod over this mountain as it were flat ground. My rock shall sling from this sling and hit that giant right between the eyes and take him out because this is the word of God and our inheritance because God gives us the victory. Thanks be unto God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who giveth unto us the victory. We have the victory today. And I want to encourage you today that you can operate in patience when the things of life that are vexing your soul are just laying so thick, heavy, and dark upon you that one day that patience will be the light in which you need that God gives that leads you right out of the struggle, out of the trial, and shows you there was a lesson that I desired to teach you in all of this. You want to pray for patience? Go ahead, pray for it. You don't have to because tribulation is coming your way anyways. But understand what you're praying for when you pray for it. I'm going to come to a, a quick close. It was pretty quick tonight, wasn't it? So far. Job chapter 23, probably my favorite chapter in Job, even with the conclusion of it. Job is right in the midst of his trials. His friends have come. They've tried to tried to come and convince him of being a sinner. He called them miserable comforters just a few chapters prior to this. We've had some of those in life, haven't we? Miserable comforters. My goodness, you could have just better kept your mouth shut 
and we would have been just fine and been better off for it. Amen? We know people like that. But Job said this in 23. Verse 1, Then Job answered and said, Even today is my complaint bitter. He still had some problems, didn't he? He said, My stroke is heavier than my groaning. And what he's saying there is, you don't know the half of it, what I'm really truly facing inside. You don't know by even as much as what I've talked about how bad it is. You can't fathom what I'm truly feeling. He says, oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might come even to his seat. I would order my calls before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would know the words which he would answer me and understand what he would say unto me. Will he plead against me with his great power? No, but he would put strength in me. The righteous might dispute with him, so should I be delivered forever from my judge. Then he said this, and maybe you felt like this before, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. I'm pressing on. I'm trying to get past all of the frustrations. I'm trying to exercise patience with the people that I'm dealing with as unruly as what they are, but I can't see that God's working anywhere around me. Job was there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. And I promise you, if you're going back, you're not going to perceive God there. Remember Lot's wife. Nothing left to turn back to. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I can't behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. But I love the faith of Job. He says right here in verse 10, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. Thank God today that we can have that same faith and assurity that Job had and we can have it more assuredly than what Job did. There was another portion of scripture that he echoes unto us. He said, oh, that there were a daysman betwixt us, between man and God. What's a daysman? A mediator. One that stands in between and proclaims the need of the other. We have him today. We've got what Job longed and cried and prayed for in Jesus Christ, do we not? There is a daysman. There is a mediator betwixt us. It says the man Christ Jesus. Only one. And he's there at the right hand of the Father. Let me tell you today that we can cry out to him in all of our stress, in all of our frustrations, in all of our agony, in all of our tribulations. And we can truly see if we're really willing to lay it down and offer these things up and say, Lord, help me. We can see things get down to brass tacks with God, can't we? It'll be a challenge to your soul much of the time because God will give you something and lead you on the way that you ought to go and you know what you ought to do, but then it's up to you to do it. It's always the hard part is the follow through. Many hearers, but not many doers. We've got to be doers of the word for those are the ones who are justified. I'll, I'll leave you tonight with these words of C.S. Lewis. God's delays are not God's denials. See, we look at it as such a trial in life. Just such a wearisome burden this life is when we get into those thickets of trials that we face. But God's delays are not His denials. We simply just come to a slowdown. It's not a standstill. 
It's just been a slowdown because that refining process often takes time. And so God put it to me like this. What is God doing in the silence? What does he do in silence? Many of the things that he's building up in you to strengthen your faith, to increase that patience, to give you peace that passes all understanding is being built in those times where you feel as if you cannot perceive God's presence around you. The Bible speaks of the cedars of Lebanon over and over and over again. Some of the greatest, tallest trees that they had in the land of those days. But I read something on those. It said that for every 10 feet that tree grows above the surface, it grows 30 feet in the root system. Which is the only thing, if any of you know what I'm talking about, it's the only thing that's truly going to support the height that that tree can get to. If the root system isn't there, it has no stability. If the root system isn't there, it's not going to receive the nutrients that it needs. If the root system isn't as vast and as strong as what it needs to be, it doesn't matter what you appear to be on the surface as I talk to you tonight. How well you've got it put together up front before people. Because you're going to build your life on something. And it matters what you build it on. Because one thing is certain, the rains will come and the winds will blow. And if you don't have the right foundation, the right root system, I promise you, great shall be the fall of who you think you are and try to make yourself appear to be. You have need of patience. And that patience is something that God is going to use in you, a fruit of the Spirit, to have you to endure the things that you are going to endure in this life for His name's sake faithfully so that that root system can begin to grow, that you may be able to stand through no matter what happens in your life. You might not see the evidence just yet of your faithfulness from the surface. Seems like a slow grow, doesn't it? Just 10 foot. But look at what God may be doing behind the scenes, beneath the surface, strengthening you, refining you. I want to leave you with these words real quick. What does God do in the silence? More than what we could ever imagine. See, Peter talked about this, didn't he? I believe it's in... Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. We've got a reason to rejoice. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now, recognize the though in there, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that what? The trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Don't get overwhelmed in the battle. God's doing more in the silence behind the scenes than what you could ever imagine. With Job, what was going on was there was a conflict beyond the veil of our vision in the spiritual realm concerning his worship. Will he continue to praise you if everything begins to fall apart? Or will he not? The devil was sure that he could get Job. I think the devil's sure that he can get me. I think the devil's sure that he can get some of you all today. But obviously the devil didn't know half of what he thought he was talking about because Job didn't deny God and neither do you have to deny him. You can stand strong today. Pastor, I turn it back over to you. Wonderful message. Powerful. 
Amen. I'm going to ask you if you can to stand with us. You need to come pray. Come on, please. I'm going to tell you something to help me in life. And I think it's the same thing to help Joseph through his trials and tribulation. Because God did give him the dreams and he, he believed that they was going to come to pass. And then, you know, it, never, it seemed like it never was. He's in prison and all this is brought, brought out tonight. But I think there's something that he held dear in his life. All through those trials and tribulations, here's what it is, and it, it's helped me so much. And if you don't have this, then you're just going to fall apart and fall to pieces because you've got to have this. Joseph trusted God. He trusted Him. And therein, he was able to wait on the Lord. I mean, how can you wait on the Lord unless you don't, if you don't trust Him? If you don't trust Him, you can't wait on the Lord. But if you, you trust the Lord, just like Abraham and Sarah, they had to trust God. They waited on the Lord for years and years and years for their son. And therein, that helped them to have patience and know that God's word, what He spoke to them, would come to pass. Because of what? They trusted Him. They trusted Him. Trust is going to help you also in all this that's been brought forth tonight. A beautiful, beautiful Word of God. But in my life, uh, I've learned, and I want to continue to learn to trust God, that He is for me. He's not against me. He's for me. He's with me. He wants to bless us. And no matter what, it, how dark it looks or how gloom it works, or how hard the trial is or the tribulation we can learn to trust God in whatever it is. Even if we think our last breath is about to come from our lungs, we can still, in that moment, and many preachers have, and I've heard their testimony, and many Christians have, they've trusted God all the way up to the end. And they've seen and give testimony to the glory of God in that moment. That even in that place that most people fear is death, we can still trust God which brings forth patience and waiting upon God. Waiting on God. Amen. I don't know about you, but He's never failed me. He's never forsaken me. He's faithful. He's always been faithful to me. I haven't always been faithful, but that didn't stop His faithfulness. I've learned that I can trust Him. And therein I can wait on Him. Yes, we all have to work on patience because we get anxious sometimes. Please learn to trust Him also. Learn to trust Him. Amen. Anybody need to come pray? Come on. Everybody come run forward now to pray for patience. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he said He'll come. It will come. Amen. Them trials and tribulations, I mean, you have to be not among the living to pass that up. You have to be already gone. My old mother, she don't have to worry about that anymore. Amen. Yours, it's gone on. They're, they don't have to worry about that anymore. They've done crossed over. But you and I, you and I have to worry about. It. We have. We don't worry about it. But we will go through it. We will go through it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody can come pray. What a beautiful word. Thank you, Lord, for sending your word tonight. Hopefully it strengthens you. Hopefully it encourages you. Hopefully it helps you through your trials and tribulations of life. God's just working on us, isn't he? God's just working on us. This last thing I went through, through this three stints and all this, God was just working on me. And you all know that because you've been through it. Some of you have been through it and other things, back pain. You're all going through it. God's just working on us. In all this, God, don't forget God is for you. In all this, God's for you in this. He's for you. He's going to bring His glory out of it somehow. Just wait on the Lord. Trust Him. Wait on the Lord. Be long-suffering at long-suffering. And trust God in it. Trust God in it. There's such a peace in that. There's such a peace in that place. That you can only find in God. 
Let me find in him. But make sure you put God first, though, please. Always put him first. Always put him first. Amen. Thank God for you tonight. We love y'all. Appreciate everybody coming out tonight. Um, you know, there's a lot of churches closing on Sunday nights. I hope this one never does. Closing on Wednesday nights, I hope we never do. Amen, because you get strength from these meetings. I don't, know about, I don't know if you understand that or not, but you could have said home tonight. But you, go, you got strength from this, from the Word of God, from fellowship, from song, and being in fellowship with one another. You get strength from that. And you're going to go away. You should go away with strength from what God has infilled you with tonight. And especially His precious Word and His songs and testimonies. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, give the Lord a big hand. Will you just thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our lives. What you're doing. Enjoy it. Enjoy your life to the fullest. Every day. Amen. Every day. Enjoy it to the fullest that you can. Amen. I hope you realize that every day you ain't going to be walking on the water. <laughs> Sometimes it's just going to be a normal, calm day. Thank God for them. You better thank God for them. Then they're going to be the walking on the water days. Then they're going to be the storms and the ship days. Amen. Whatever they are, all these, they trusted in God. And they had patience that God would bring them through it. And he did. Amen. All right. Thank the Lord.